In this tutorial, we're going to be discussing how we go about calculating pressure losses due to friction. And in this first video, we're going to focus on pressure losses due to friction for laminar flow. There's only one equation that we need to calculate pressure losses due to friction, and it's displayed in the top right hand corner. Pressure loss equals CF, well C subscript F is something called a friction factor, as we'll see in a moment. Rho, which is the density u squared, which is the fluid velocity squared, l, which is the length of pipe, divided by 2 times the diameter. So there's quite a lot of factors that affect the amount of pressure that's going to be lost as a result of friction. So for simplicity, we're going to assume that L1 is 1.5 metres, and we're also going to assume that L2 is 1.5 metres. The first thing that we notice from the Darcy equation is we don't know the friction factor, we're given the density, and we don't know the fluid velocity. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to take our volume flow rate in the bottom left hand corner and the diameter of section 1 of the pipe, and we're going to calculate velocity 1, which is the velocity in the first section of pipe. We've seen this formula previously, we need to do the volume flow rate divided by the cross-sectional area of the pipe. So we have 0 0.02 divided by pi r squared. Well, if our diameter is 180 millimetres, our radius is 90 millimetres, which is the same as 0 0.09 metres. Therefore, the velocity of the fluid in the first section of the pipe equals 0 0.786 meters per second, and that's accurate to three decimal places. Now, as we go back and inspect our Darcy formula, we now know all of the variables except the coefficient of friction. And there's a method that we need to apply in order to determine the coefficient of friction, and it involves the use of the Reynolds number. So let's calculate our Reynolds number in the first section of the pipe. And our formula for that is rho u1 d1 over mu. So we need to use the corresponding diameter and velocity for the fluid in the first section of the pipe. The density is given above the diagram, 810. The fluid velocity we've just calculated, 0 0.786. The diameter of the pipe is given, we just need to remember to work in metres. So 0.18, and the dynamic viscosity is given above the diagram, 0 0.08, giving us a Reynolds number equal to 1432. That's dimensionless, so it doesn't require any units. So we know that we have laminar flow. Now it's at this point that it's useful to introduce something called the Moody diagram. So let's take a look at the Moody diagram and then we can determine our friction factor, and finally we can calculate our pressure loss. So here we have a Moody diagram, and we're going to be discussing this in greater detail when we come to look at turbulent flow. But for now, just as a basic introduction, we see three different axes on here. At the bottom, we have readings for Reynolds number. On the right hand side we have readings for something called relative roughness. And on the left hand side we use those two things in order to determine our friction factor. Now as we know, laminar flow occurs at Reynolds numbers below 2000. So if we inspect our Reynolds number scale, we can see that we actually have a logarithmic scale. We have 10 cubed, well 10 cubed, is the same as a thousand. We have 10 to the 4. Well, 10 to the 4 is the same as 10,000. We have 10 to the 5, which is a hundred thousand. 10 to the 6, which is a million. 10 to the 7, which is 10 million, and so on. So we can use our Moody diagram when we have very high values for Reynolds number. But for the purpose of this tutorial, we're looking at laminar flow. And if we look at our lower values of Reynolds number, we have 1000 marked on the axis. The next indication here 
will be a Reynolds number of 2000. So when we have a Reynolds number below 2000, what we need to do is we need to scan upwards, like so, and when we strike the laminar flow line, we would scan to the left. So there I've sketched on an example as if we had a Reynolds number of 1000. If we had a Reynolds number of 400, we would locate 400 on our Reynolds number axis. We would scan upwards until we struck the line, and then we would travel left to get our friction factor. However, because the relationship for laminar flow is a linear relationship, we see that we have a straight line here, we can apply a simple formula to determine our friction factor. And that friction factor here states that laminar flow, we use 64 over the Reynolds number to get the friction factor. So to keep things as simple as possible, when we're dealing with laminar flow, we're always going to calculate our friction factor by doing 64 over the Reynolds number. Okay, let's return to our calculations. We can determine our friction factor using the formula, and then we can calculate the pressure loss using the Darcy equation. Okay, so from the Moody diagram then, we know that the friction factor CF is 64 over the Reynolds number. Well, in this case, we have a Reynolds number of 1432. 64 over 1432 equals 0 0.0447. Again, that's dimensionless, but we know our value of CF is 0 0.0447. So the final step for solving the pressure loss is to plug everything into our formula. So we have the pressure loss equals the coefficient of friction, 0 0.0447, times the density, 810, times the velocity squared, 0 0.786 squared, times the pipe length, 1.5 metres, and all of that is going to be divided by two times our diameter, remembering to do our diameter in metres, so 0 0.18, and running that all through the calculator gives us a pressure loss in the first section of the pipe equal to 93.20 pascals. So a relatively small pressure loss. In the next video, we're going to look at how we calculate pressure losses due to friction when we have turbulent flow, as we're going to have in section three of this pipe work.